call the regularly scheduled Berlin Select Board to order. Uh, to my left is uh, Justin Lawrence, Flo Smith. To my right is Jeremy Hansen. I'm Brad Town. Um, we also have Dana Hadley, our town administrator, and Diane Isabel, the town treasurer. Any additions or changes to the agenda, Dana? I do have some changes, Brad. I'd like to add, we have an additional peddler's permit application that I'd like to add in with the peddler's license. MVP Healthcare is one, and this one's from Mike Moeller. I'd like to add it in that section. Um, I'd like to add, I need signatures on appointments <coughs> that you made at the last meeting, so I'd like to add that. I'd like to add a short discussion on the new sewer ordinance, our sewer ordinance in process. Um, I'd also like to add a discussion on the budget schedule and town meeting, a town meeting concern. Um, I'd like to add a letter you received for a resignation from the Development Review Board, and I guess that is it. Uh, any public comment? Hearing none, Treasurer's Report, Diane. Okay. I've scheduled two properties for tax sale that will take place on December 12th at 10 o'clock at the town office. Uh, like I said, there's two properties. Um, I think these people are, are really working hard to get this paid before it comes to tax sale, so it's very possible I will not have a tax sale. However, uh, the first meeting in December, if they've not been taken care of, I will present it to the board as far as the two properties and give you the information. So that will be on December 5th. And then uh, a few weeks back, or maybe a month back, you asked, um, we were looking at either a bridge loan or arbitrage as far as the sewer. It's right, the sewer project. sewer project, yeah. Okay. So I went to three different sources. Uh, Northfield Savings Bank was not interested in the arbitrage part. Okay, they didn't want to do that. They just wanted to do the um, bridge loan. And the arbitrage is just for my edification. Mm -hmm. We would borrow the entire amount now and put that money into an investment vehicle. With that bank? With the same bank. Mm -hmm. In an effort to have a profit from the interest. However, as you start spending the money, then obviously you're going to have less and less available to you. Uh, and so I did Community National Bank said that they would, you know, they were inter interested in that as far as the arbitrage goes. And they were telling me, let's see, we're just okay, that they would give us a fixed rate of 2.05% and for the loan and 2.25% for the investment rate. And that's just based on you know, the whole amount. And then as you start taking the money out of it, well, then that will decrease as time goes on. So I think that you and I calculated the, the best possible case scenario would maybe be $6,000, maybe. Case scenario. If, and that, I strongly doubt that would be the case because right. you're going to be withdrawing large I sums. I think that once we break ground, that's where the big money comes out. And then it's start trickling after that. And what was the rate from the, from the previous bank? Northfield? Northfield did not, uh, they would not do the, they didn't want to do the arbitrage part. But if, if they just gave us a straight yes, a line straight, of credit? Uh, yes, a straight line of credit, 4.25%. Okay. And with Community National Bank, if we went with a straight line of credit, it's 2.05%. And with Community Bank NA, which is one we deal with the most, they would also do the arbitrage, and they said that their rates would be 2.95% for the loan and 3.25% for the um, investment. And that vehicle. was veritable, though. That was, yes, that was that's, their top, so that's, that's right. not a guaranteed mm -hmm. rate. Right. And um, right now, and this, this rate is only good as far as the line of credit, this is only good until next week. Uh, it's 1.85% from CUNY Bank NA. And obviously, if you go with the line of credit, we won't start drawing from the line of credit until we're just about ready to break ground, which would be in the spring. <coughs> so we certainly wouldn't get that rate. No. Probably not. No. But we'll have to, you know, rebid it at that point because the most they're going to hold it for is two months anyways. I think we were trying to see what advantage the arbitrage would be for Thank us. Um, I don't see it myself. Mm -hmm. um, I, plus, 
why do you want to borrow money before you need it? Yeah, unless that somehow makes your bookkeeping easier, which I can't it, imagine. It does not actually make yeah. it harder. And it's going to make the audit a little more difficult as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So probably when we are ready, and, and we weren't sure how the USDA would look upon <coughs> that arrangement for a bridge loan. Um, when we're closer to needing the money, I guess what I would suggest to the board that we don't consider the arbitrage, that we just consider the line of credit. And what's nice about the line of credit is we only draw what we need and pay interest on it as we need it rather than the whole loan. That's my opinion. That's all. <coughs> Thank you very much, Diane. Diane. There's other stuff in here, I guess, that's okay. in the agenda. Okay. I don't know if people are still looking at the licenses. Uh, Economic Development Council, tax escape, uh, the tax stabilization application. All right, Tor. We set up here. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what. Uh, good evening. I'm Tor Nelson with the Berlin Economic Development Council. I used to be here. One of you. Life is great with how it just said. No, we, we need more people volunteering. Um, so I think you're familiar with the project itself. I think you've been briefed on it before. The uh, uh, 98 unit uh, housing here in the Berlin Mall property. Uh, they approached um, the town for the tax stabilization agreement. Um, as part of that process, it has to go through the Economic <coughs> Development Council. Uh, first, we review the, the application and everything to make sure it uh, meets the requirements of the program, uh, which we felt it did. Uh, then it goes to the select board for the final approval. Uh, so basically what we did is um, went through the requirements of the, uh, of the program uh, line item and felt that it did meet the uh, requirements of the program, uh, the one item um, that wasn't was the you know the um, financing in place, but that's going to be required before they can you know proceed with the project anyway. So um, you know we felt that it, you know we could uh, recommend it for approval based on the contingency that they get the required uh, financing. Um, they asked for the uh, five year. Um, we'll call it abatement, uh, five-year agreement, <coughs> um, where they would pay 10% uh, of the increase the first year, 20%, 40%, 60%, 80% after the fifth year, then at the sixth year they would be paying the full uh, amount of the municipal tax, and municipal tax only is what <coughs> we're uh, looking at, that's only what our program allows, uh, does not affect the um, education rates. Um, so I guess I would recommend uh, the board approve this agreement. Um, but if you have any questions, I mean, it does meet um, the program itself does meet. Um, you know, it's part of our economic development plan uh, from 2008 uh, to have the the um, tax demonstration program. Um, basically, all the projects we've approved so far have been up in the, you know, the plateau area around the Berlin Mall. So. <clears throat> Happy to answer any questions you have. So, um, the, and this is not really a question, but your, the, 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 the predictable answer and then what we sort of talked about at, at the meeting too. Um, so it is in the economic development plan. I think we, the select board, need to take another look at that plan and make sure that that still makes sense, you know, 10-ish years later. Um, I'm not convinced that foregoing 160000 in um, tax revenue is a, a wise use of, wise use of um, taxpayer money. Um, I'm not sure that this is the, the best way to go about doing economic development. I think it's too uh, it's too broad, and unless there's actual um, unless we're doing something targeted, um, 
some sort of targeted economic development, I can't see it. this as a, as a particularly valuable tool. So it's my intention to vote, vote against this. Even though the application is certainly it checks all the boxes. So currently, currently it falls within what we have set for our, our plan. It meets the requirements, yes. It meets the requirements for the application, but it's still up to the select board to, to approve. Yeah, well, I know, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Um, I didn't get a chance to look over it as much as I should have. Do we want to ask any questions? Any additional questions of Tour while he's here? No, it's time. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, so when you when you say it's going to cost the taxpayers one hundred and sixty thousand dollars, it's all new revenue, though, isn't it? Right. So that would be that would be revenue that. You know, presumably the construction is going to happen and if they were taxed like everybody else at the full at the full value of their development then over the five years we would be giving up one hundred and sixty thousand dollars of that of that new revenue sure right mm -hmm. what were your thoughts on but uh, you know we're looking at um, you know giving up the hundred sixty thousand over the five years versus the you know additional revenue over you know the right. lifetime of the lifetime project of the or, you know 30, 50, however many years. So, but, that, but that's that's also assuming that if they don't get this incentive, that the project doesn't get built. Correct. Well, I think we do incentives like that so that people choose to build here, right? Isn't that part of the reason for the town center? That is, and that and that's why we're looking at raising revenue and doing that focused, concentrated economic development activity in building the town center. And by building the sewer and by building the water system, these are all things that the town is spending money to do to incentivize economic development. It's one of the reasons that I'm working on building better broadband in central Vermont. Um, we have all of these these tools in our in our toolbox. I'm I for this particular this tax stabilization, I'm not convinced that this is the right way to spend. Yes, it's new revenue. Not not the right way to forego $160,000 in tax revenue. We could. You know, it, it wouldn't be it would be more than that. But what if we had that that tax revenue and we were able to hire somebody to help coordinate the uh, town center, like like we had, you know we had talked about before? No, I agree with that. But <clears throat> how much revenue will this Jeff? Yeah. I would just add. I would just like to add that I one of the concerns. I understand that you may think that this it may not stop this project, but there are some others that are percolating, and I would hate for them to not you know not follow through with their project because they see this happening it's just just a thought but, but i mean about those projects that are going to get built in berlin regardless of of us approving some something like this i mean I, but, but I berlin say, is but berlin's an, an attractive place to you know to build because the the property's reasonably cheap it's not it's not montpelier it's not barry where those places are you know heavily developed already um, you know, we have good interstate access, we have an airport, we have a train station. Um, hopefully we'll have the, the town center designation reasonably soon. All right. but I also think one of the things that makes Berlin tractable is that we do have on the books and have utilized in the past this tax stabilization program. And I think that's one of the things that helps bring the developers to looking at Berlin. But so, but so do many of the surrounding communities here in Central Vermont. So I mean, it doesn't really distinguish us much. Being new to the board, can you help me understand the tax stabilization process and how it has benefits from your perspective? Um, this has been around since I think two thousand early two thousand eleven. Um, we've used it, well, we've had, um, I think this is our fifth yeah, proposal that, that came fifth, okay. for yeah. it. Um, Northfield Savings Bank project was one. Um, Vermont, so Union, or Vermont Mutual? Vermont Mutual. 
Um, one that came before us was uh, uh, coal, but they didn't meet the requirements. The coal right. did not meet they the requirements. Not, yeah. um, and then Walmart, uh, when they expanded to the Super Walmart, mm -hmm. they approached us, the board approved it, um, but the increase in the um, assessed value did not trigger the requirements, so they ended up not getting it. Um, so the board has approved some, and the board has you know, turned a few down. Um, I, I agree with Jeremy that I think it's a, you know, a good time to take a look at this program. Um, is it doing what we want it to do? Um, are there tweaks that we can make to it? Maybe, maybe so. One of the, the reasons why the COLS was not approved um, is that the um, has to be approved in advance of construction on starting on the building. COLS had started construction before they approached us, and that's why we, I, I feel rightly, turned that down. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's solely a technicality on, on the part of the, on the program. They didn't meet the requirements, but that's clearly what it states in the program. That it has to be approved before construction began, and it, it didn't meet that. Mm -hmm. Is that something we want to look at? Maybe so, maybe not. Yes, sir. Um, I'm Jamie Stewart. I'm the executive director for Central Vermont Economic Development Corporation, and I was part of your Berlin Economic Development uh, Committee. I worry a little bit about what Jeremy is referring to, primarily because I've seen how that works at the state level. The state's incentives have a clause in there that is called the but for clause. And it states that but for this incentive, uh, this activity would not occur or would occur in a significantly different and less desirable manner. And what it does is it forces companies to go look at other options. It forces companies to physically go and talk to other entities, other states, where we would not see the benefit in Vermont. And that has been a concern. The reason it's there is precisely to answer the question that Jeremy is, is that would this happen without the incentive? And the applicants have to uh, declare that, in fact, it would not happen, or if it did happen, it would happen in a significantly different and less desirable. It means maybe it takes 10 years to build out instead of two. Maybe it's a smaller project than originally envisioned. But you don't have a but for in your rules and regs. And really, I think that's what uh, Jeremy is describing. And I would not want to impose, I would not want you to impose that restriction. And this is something we talked about within the committee. Uh, and the committee agreed that we should not impose a restriction on this uh, that did not exist in what you had written in the rules and regulations. Um, and it does and could potentially impact if the perception is that somebody who fully meets your rules and regulations comes before this body and is denied. Uh, that that will change the perception of how people and developers would look at doing further development here. So, I have my next question was going to be anyway. Have we ever turned down an application that's met all the criteria in the past? I mean, like. Cole nope. didn't meet it, so we weren't able to do it. We haven't turned one down. I agree that maybe it's a good time to look at it, but I, mean, I can't think of any that we've turned down. So, so but then the, the, and the, but the last time this came up, you know, why, why is there a vote of approval in front of the select board? Because we, you know, the select board ultimately gets to make the decision about whether this is a wise, a wise move. If it was just, <clears throat> excuse me, if it was just. They fill in the blanks and it goes. It doesn't need to go in front of us. It just it just gets approved and off it goes. And they and you know Diane changes the tax bills. But, so we have discretion here, and I understand what Jamie's saying that. You know, if everybody, if all the check boxes are checked, then we should just go ahead and do it. I mean, that's the that's what I'm hearing. Um, I just don't agree <coughs> that we ought to just say yes to everything that that comes across our desk. Yeah. Especially since we, we haven't um, we haven't really done any sort of economic analysis of the projects that we have that have gone through, so we can say you know anecdotally, sure, um, you know Northfield Savings Bank they, they have an office great, um, Vermont Mutual they have an office and they took advantage of these programs, but what's the what's the benefit is that money well spent? Or money well for, foregone, we'll say. 
Well, and when I, but when I think about it, I say, you know, if it takes longer to build out a project or somebody doesn't build there for five years or they look at something else, I mean, there's a lot of delays a lot of times and we have the program in place now. I mean, I don't know why we wouldn't look at it at an ongoing basis, but I don't know why. Um, I, I can't understand why we wouldn't approve it. Um, so I want to make the motion to approve the Dusevich tax stabilization application pending uh, what is it, financing. Um, so. You're a second? I was going to lean for additional discussion, but I will second the motion. No, we can have more discussion. <laughs> um, so what I take to her is that um, As long as it's as long as it's meeting the uh, requirements and your committee has uh, okayed it, that we should take probably follow town um, policy on this. That'd be my recommendation. You know, this is right there at the mall where you, know, you talk about the town center designation. It's it provides affordable housing, which is um, what I call crisis in the state. Um, you know, you know, it's going to bring in people, bring in additional uh, traffic at the mall, not just the residents, but people visiting the residents and stuff. They're going to be shopping at the mall and stuff. Um, so I think it's, I think it's a good project for the town. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? No. Motion carries. And. Uh, Next on the agenda is the municipal. Thank you. <laughs> municipal ticketing for zoning infractions. Mr. Whipple, who's he? Yeah. He is. He is. He's getting something out of his briefcase as we know. I assume that's him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Mr. Whipple. All right, folks. Yeah. Now. Tom asked me to bring a projector, but we don't have a very big room, no. so I think maybe we can just talk now. I think we can bypass it. <laughs> Did he, he also said that he printed off the presentation I brought. I think I've got six. So if you don't have them, I think I have to have some yeah, with that. Okay, but whoever doesn't have them, please, because I want to I refer to them. Thank you, Trevor. I'd love one, yeah. <laughs> and I can refer to my computer when we're on short. Okay. Okay. Right. computer just in case. So, so how, hard is it to, how hard is it to enforce these local <laughs> ordinances? So we, we've uh, started uh, in my new job with the league. Um, they're taking advantage of... Uh, some of my experience, because we did this in Barry, we did some of this in South Burlington, not necessarily just with zoning, but with a number of uh, town ordinances. Uh, it's not necessarily that difficult. Um, what, and we can go through in detail, we can just have a dialogue. I mean, really what it comes down to, and I've um, exchanged, I haven't met Tom in person, he's not here? No. Okay, no. all right, so I've just talked with him. So what it comes down to is you just have to craft the ordinance with specific legal language. Uh, because the statute allows you to develop a town ordinance um, that specifically says that we can enforce it through a civil ordinance violation. You can re enforce it through the Judicial Bureau. Uh, it's tantamount to, it's a, almost the exact same process as your officers next door writing speeding tickets, writing tickets for going through a red light, that type of thing. Um, the idea behind it was uh, when the state crafted this ability, was to allow towns and cities, allow municipalities, uh, an additional enforcement option uh, that was one step higher than a simple letter of notice of violation, one step higher than a warning, but one step lower than uh, taking somebody to the environmental court. Because uh, being one of the taxpayers, I appreciate maybe doing things through a little less expensive way uh, than hiring an attorney who's now going to draw up a complaint and get somebody into court, you're gonna to have to pay for hearings. Um, so, I mean, this isn't a, it's not a panacea, it doesn't fix everything, but it does provide one more step in a, a potential enforcement process. Uh, a pretty frugal one, actually. 
because, um, and I've shared the information with Tom, and there's, there's some in this presentation too, is that you can craft the ordinance and you can write into the ordinance uh, what, the, what the regulations are. You can write in what the penalties are to fine. Uh, you can craft it as long as it's under $800. Uh, this process can be used for anything that has a fine uh, up to $800. So anything less than $800 you can use this process for. Um, and you, as you craft the ordinance, uh, you actually write into it uh, who your enforcement official or officials are. Um, so in South Burlington, uh, we had a pretty aggressive zoning enforcement officer. I don't know if anybody ever knew Ray Belair, but Ray was, uh, he was the, the leader in this. and. Um, because uh, he was enforcing zoning ordinances, it did say, and the, the council up there wrote in that, that law enforcement officers could enforce these, that was kind of the blanket, but they specifically wrote in that uh, the, the zoning officer, the zoning enforcement officer, uh, many had the health officer, an animal control officer, it depends on which ordinance you're looking at. Um, but in our case for zoning in South Burlington, we really looked at uh, the zoning officer to be that enforcement official because uh, if you wanted to go out and assess, first of all, is there a violation, uh, you need to be pretty savvy with what your zoning bylaws are, what your zoning regulations are, and then should an individual get uh, written uh, an ordinance violation, get written a ticket, uh, they have the opportunity to appeal it, it goes before the court, before a hearing officer, and you would want to make sure that you had someone with the expertise to speak to what the violation was. Um, so we, the, the police officers, the men and women that worked for me in South Burlington, we did not enforce zoning just because they weren't zoning experts. They didn't understand and, and I think they would have struggled a little bit to testify in court. Um, but, uh, you know, the, what, this is a, a presentation not prepared just for you. It's We gave it at uh, Town Fair. We're having, I think it's December 4th, we're having a day-long uh, training uh, conference right down at the Capitol Plaza. I'm pretty sure it's the fourth. Um, but the idea of this municipal, uh, enforcing local ordinance by this municipal ordinance process is just to give the, give the municipalities the, the option. One more tool in the toolkit so that uh, you might be able to just uh, encourage someone through uh, education. You might be able to take the next step and give them a, a written notice of violation to the next little prod. If that doesn't work, then this is a next step where you can write them a ticket and say, okay, now you're accused of a violation. We're going to take it to the first level uh, in the judicial process. We're going to go to the local, uh, to the judicial bureau. The hearings are right down in Barrie. Um, and then your zoning officer, or whoever you decide is the enforcement official, uh, is the person that writes the ticket. They're the ones that prosecutes the ticket, so uh, you don't have to pay for a lawyer. This system is designed for uh, the regular municipal employee to go up against the, the resident or the violator, whoever that is. With Now, the violator has the option to bring a lawyer if they wish, but many do not. They just appear on their own. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I don't want to go through the whole uh, presentation with you unless you have additional questions. In South Burlington, I mean, how I'm all, I'm just wondering yeah. how successful it was. I think you know Ray is gone; he retired, but I think it was. I think it helped mm -hmm. because the the point is, if it's not successful, you're really not that much further behind. Particularly if you have an already on the uh, you know uh, on the payroll municipal employee writing the violation, potentially going to court. So you're not paying legal fees. So really what you're doing, you're giving it teeth because there's money involved. For, Correct. Yeah. You're giving it, and, and the way the, the municipal enforcement process works is that um, you folks would decide what the fine is. Usually it's, it's increasing depending on a number of violations. So the first time it's you know, maybe $100, the second time $200, the third time $400, whatever you want, up to $800. Um, so that kind of gets people's attention. Okay, first time it's $100. Now, if they don't show up at court, or if they go to court and contest this violation and lose, then the court awards the judgment to the town. Um, and if that individual doesn't pay, then uh, the, the state eventually, it wasn't there initially, but they found that there were a number of folks who were just kind of thumbing their nose and saying, I'm not going to pay. Now, written into the legislation is that the court administrator is authorized to send any of these uncollected fines to a collection agency. Um, so on behalf of the town, you don't have to do that. The state enters these into 
uh, the, a collection agency that the state has contracted with. Um, I don't know the outcome. I'm sure they probably take a percentage uh, for their work, but they do the work for you. Um, I was wondering, you know, we had one case, we didn't have the system, but it was uh, cleaning up a junkyard. And we yeah. ended up in court with it, and we spent considerable amount of resources, and we still have no results. Um, this is going to fix you, that. <laughs> and, and you can't get you can't get blood out of a stone, as my mother used to say. Correct. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. There are some people. Yeah. I mean, if you don't if, if you don't have the resources, I mean, if, frankly, if you if you write a ticket for a hundred dollar fine and this well, individual exactly. doesn't yeah. have a hundred dollars, uh, you right. know, what are you going to do? Uh, you know, even if the state sent it to the collection bureau, you can't get blood out of the stone. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but the idea is it's just, it's another option available to, to towns and cities that choose to, to use it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I've shared with Tom in this, in this uh, presentation, there is a link um, to, uh, you can go on to our MAC, the Municipal Assistance Center. The attorneys there at MAC will help the town if you need guidance on, if you wanted to craft an ordinance so that you could use this process. They have some samples, they can provide some guidance on, on how to do that. We have some wording in our zoning. Um, so in other words, we were, Tom and I were wondering whether we actually needed an ordinance. Sounds like we do. Um, this is in the zoning code, and it gives some, um, which was approved by the voters. And I don't mean to put you on the spot. No, you no. Know um, I, I do know <laughs> that, um, and I'm not the lawyer, so I'm not giving you any legal advice here, but right. I do know that the key elements needed for this process are not in this ordinance. Okay. Um, that so answers my question, if, then. You know, and if this does, that does speak to tickets, so I don't know what it speaks to. If you had just a local level ticket that you were writing, and I don't know how you would collect or enforce that. This process uh, to go through the state, the judicial bureau, um, that is not up to, that does not. That's my question, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it would have to yeah. be enhanced a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. But again, you know, it's uh, you folks decide who has this ability. Uh, I think some smaller communities even give uh, the town administrator the ability. They just craft it into the ordinance, and the town administrator has the authority to enforce this if you so desire. But you I get can't to tell you how many times decide. I've lost. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this, you know, and this presentation is for a uh, it's a real, more robust discussion, certainly um, that I'm happy to have, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. But I think I think that really covers kind of the, the highlights of it. I think we're struggling to. Um, Enfor our, our biggest problem is enforcing our own rules, yeah. and I think yeah. that's pretty common. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, certainly, yeah. But um, if this gave us some teeth that maybe would help us do that, um, although I'm thinking about violators and they have no resources. Yeah, um, yeah. So. And, uh, you know, but on the other just hand, comments, on the things. other hand, and I don't know uh, the folks that you're dealing with on a regular basis, but, you know, is a process like this maybe the, the threat of it? Uh, I don't know that, hey, you know, if, if we have to, if, if I have to come back, then I'm going to write you a ticket and the violation is $250. So rather than risk that happening, why don't you just come into compliance? Um, Certainly, I know there's a number of people I've encountered in my life that's not going to make a bit of difference. Right. But yeah. there are some that maybe, you know, that little gentle oh, bump sure. is enough yeah. to get their attention and say, well, I don't, I don't want to go that extra step. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, you know, but as, as I said in the beginning, the, the purpose behind it was it's a pretty, uh, pretty affordable, pretty cost effective, lower level of enforcement uh, available if a town chooses to use it or not. Um, it's just an option. Yeah, Bob. I, I just um, I've been in the DRB now for some twenty odd years and too long. <laughs> um, but we have a lot of what I call petty violations. My sense is a process like this would deal very effectively with what I call these petty violations. In other words, people who have the means but choose to sort of assign ordinance by examining. Yeah. We use common, common for common problem with people putting up signs that are illegal. Chasing them down is stuff, it's just costly. It's time consuming. Um, that time ought to be compensated for somehow. Um, yes, there are going to be people out there who have, don't have the means. And so the blood out of the stone, 
applies to them. But there's there's a whole host of folk that they suddenly realize I'm doing something petty, but I could get fined one hundred fifty dollars for it. It isn't worth it to me. I'm done. You know. So I suggest strongly that we consider this. Um, I don't know all the aspects of it. I don't know what the ordinance would look like, but um, uh, certainly over my years of of, of issuing uh, findings of fact only to have them violated in some way or another. It just, it's kind of annoying. And recognizing that town officials really kind of have their hands tied because it's an expensive process, it's a time-consuming process. You almost need like a whole other employee just to chase these people. Um, it, it's just not, it doesn't work well. So I think we, one could just simply issue a, uh, a ticket. It would make a lot of sense to me. What's the average, uh, or how small community uh, have these uh, ordinances that are enforced? Oh Lord, you know what? I, I don't know, Mr. Chair. I'm not prepared to answer that. Uh, I think that it's it's random, the, the people I've encountered, and, and we've not done a survey to say who's already done this process. Um, I know I was up in Lowell uh, a few weeks ago, Lowell, much smaller than, than Berlin. They don't have it yet, but they're very anxious to get just some baseline ordinance in, just things that are routine problematic to their, their community, and it's like, no, we just think this is the little push, maybe, that will just help those folks to realize that we, we're serious about what we say, and we have, we have ordinances, we have bylaws for a reason, and we just want you to follow them. So I actually followed one of your links, to where the Vermont Judicial Bureau actually reports the municipal um, ordinances. The right. So there, you're right, there you can see who's actually using so, it. Yeah. So uh, Burlington, Essex, Rutland City, Barrytown, Bellows Falls, Wilmington, Thetford, West Windsor, Westford, Georgia, Jeffersonville, Rattleboro. Um, and that was just for well, that was just for the month of May. And and those can be those. Uh, there's also a lot of animal control uh, ordinances that are written this way as well. So you know some of those could be sure. leash law. Probably not in those rural communities leash law violations. But that's also an option as well. Mm -hmm. So you can use them for any municipal ordinance. Pretty much all across the board as far as size. Yeah, yeah. So you and and that actually and, and Jeremy and I'll uh, leave it to the data guy. Um, you know, <laughs> th those those communities would also potentially be good resources to reach out to and say, what are you using this process mm -hmm. for? How effective has it been for you? Yeah, right. um, that would very town is one of those. Yeah. Sure, we could talk yeah. to. Yeah. I could talk to Carl. Yeah, and the idea yeah. is that even if you you know if you did want to to try it the cost is minimal. I mean, you have to write the ordinance, you have to warn it, you have to go through the normal ordinance warning and adoption process, but really there's not much expense to that. Um, I'm not worried about time. that expense. Yeah. I'm just trying to understand, and, it, and yeah. it, I'm just maybe reading things in that aren't there, <laughs> but um, I'm just wondering when you come and it goes to the court and you've got somebody that has to prosecute, is that yep. you, the yep. word you yep. use? Prosecute. Um, and I'm thinking of myself who, you know, I, I'll be lucky I can find the courthouse and hey, right. prosecute anything. Um, but how much um, effort that takes and how expensive can it be and is there legal cost? And, and I'm hearing you say no. I'm, there, there doesn't uh, have to be. I yeah. mean, the way the design is, so let's say in, in the perfect world you're talking zoning and uh, what's Tom's title? Zoning administrator. Zoning administrator. So you write into the ordinance, it would make sense. The zoning administrator would enforce your zoning ordinances. He's the expert. Um, so he writes the violation. The person contests it. He goes to the court. Uh, it's routinely a 10 or 15 minute hearing. He presents a case, uh, the evidence saying this is what the person has done. This is how we have substantiated the violation. The individual being accused gets the right to mount whatever defense they want, plead whatever they want, and then the hearing officer makes a ruling. Mm -hmm. um, so the only cost there is his time to get out of the courthouse and bury, and um, most times, municipal employees, he's already on the clock. Sure, it's juggling workload, perhaps, but I don't know that there's right, any, yeah, that's, that's I don't know that there's an added right, yeah. cost. Yeah. Well, yeah, if it even gets that far. If it even gets that way. Right. I mean, the person may decide to, as we call it, pay by waiver. They put the check in the envelope, say, okay, I guess I won't do that anymore. And that would be work ideal, I think, for what Bob's talking about over there. With sure. Sign yeah. Problems and, and, and we had, uh, I mean, we, we regulated yeah. signs like 
you know, it's no tomorrow in South right. Burlington, and we, you know, and they gave sign tickets all the time, mm -hmm. um, and it was pretty effective to get people's attention. And and we also found that uh, for some of the entities, and I don't know if you folks serve as the local liquor board, but uh, we actually ended up when the liquor license renewal came in, we had some businesses who we wrote local violations to. They thumbed their nose at us, and we said, well. Then we can't approve your liquor license. You've got outstanding tickets, and it's amazing how quickly they resolved when a when a restaurant wasn't going to get their liquor license. So sometimes there's other mechanisms. <laughs> we would never admit that. Yeah. <laughs> that it's the, it was the reality of it. The, does BLT, uh, BLCT have any of these uh, ordinances on record? Uh, they have. They can point to some language, and if you talk to the, the municipal assistance center, the, the attorneys yeah. over there, they said they would be more than happy to talk with Tom, with whomever, uh, about you know, here's some samples that we have from other communities, or let's look at what you have and see what it takes to really make it fit into this mm -hmm. uh, legal mechanism. So they would be happy to, to work with Tom on that if you wanted to come up with uh, with a recommendation, even to say, hey, how much work is it going to take to get the town of Berlin into a position where you could utilize this system should you choose to. Has Tom shared his thoughts on the program? He's in favor of the he he's is. in favor okay. of the program. I wasn't sure. You know, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm also in favor of it. I'm not I'm just trying to think of the right. downfalls down the road. I'll see you yeah. on December fourth. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah we've got a whole day of it. You know, so come on in. But, sure. okay. but I think it's a way, I mean, for a long time it's our hardest job is to enforce our own rules. Mm -hmm. And I deal with the people that are not cooperative. <laughs> and that's where I'm going. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm looking at Barry Town's ordinances right now, and, and they have one on the regulation of junk, and it has some of the same language as, as what you're talking about in, in, in here. I mean, first offense is $100, and so on. This would apply to junk vehicles as well, abandoned vehicles? Right, that's actually, mm -hmm. yeah. those mm -hmm. are my biggest that's cases. That's what you wrote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's and, your so, so they, and they have language that specifically talks about taking title to un unclaimed motor vehicles mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the statutory you know, link from there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds like the DRB has a completely different perspective too. Than that, I never thought about the sign violations and the businesses, and the, I, I don't even know why. But like take down those signs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. 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 I guess I would say to the board, is this something you wish us to pursue, and we'll go ahead and we'll work with. Um, either the league or our own attorney on mm -hmm. ordinance structure. I'm definitely in favor of it. Mm -hmm. I think it would be very beneficial. And I think it provides you an, an option. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just because you have the ordinance, it doesn't say you have to go that route. Um, you, right. could, you could go the other, you know, the more, uh, the more severe environmental court violation if you chose to. So I guess we have a consensus that uh, to pursue this. So I'm thinking maybe we'll go forward, we'll, we'll craft a, an ordinance and then have you look at it and go from there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how long that will take, but maybe by December 4th we'll know a little more about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that'll be a more yeah. robust discussion on the 4th. Yeah. 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 Well, question for you. Um, <coughs> my, my concern is about zoning because I'm on the DRB, but um, we do have many other ordinances uh, that are not particularly by the police, that we don't have a ticketing process for is like dogs or something like that. Is that something you want to consider at the same time? Well, I would say one-shot deal. Mm -hmm. Save a lot of agony. Oh, down you the road. Just you have a very good point, because we have many <laughs> ordinances that talk about civil fines, <laughs> and oh, I'm not sure ordinance. exactly how they do it. So it's, mm -hmm. yeah. I think, I mean, my concern is about the violations to the rules we write, but um, I think you ought to look at the rest of them, too, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, the alarm ordinance comes into mind. It's yes. Like, it's yeah, we used it extensively yes. for the alarm ordinance exactly. in South Burlington. Now, when you Traffic did that, who then. did you have enforce it? it for the alarms? Yeah. Um, we, we chose to have the police enforce the alarms because we were the ones responding to the alarms, tracking the alarms. Um, so we did it on the police side. Mm -hmm. Now, what about, did that include the fire alarms also? 
We didn't have a fire alarm. We only had a security alarm ordinance. We did not have a fire alarm ordinance. So, so we, we could empower the chief. I mean, currently the ordinance is written. We empower the chief of police to issue those tickets. But we, so we could make him the enforcement, one, one of the enforcement officers. Or I would encourage you to even list to any, any law enforcement officer. Sure. And that way, if you were to ever get a constable again or whatever. Uh, well, volunteer. <laughs> the, the, uh, Strike that. <laughs> Run while you can. Too late. <laughs> the, only, the only thing I was wondering is our our fire department is not part of the municipality. It's a it's a uh, separate entity. Right. Right. Now these ordinances can, as far as the fire alarms go, could they be the ones to enforce it, or do they have to be a municipal? We've empowered an animal control officer that's not a municipal employee. To, yeah. to enforce animal control ordinances. Yeah, I mean, I guess I, I would have to look at the statute. I don't know the answer to that for sure. The animal control officers have issued uh, fines, is there? In most communities that use this, they list the animal control officer as an enforcement uh, individual for the animal ordinances. Mm -hmm. Because it was listed yeah. in here to right. animal control yeah. officer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know because the fire department here is so unique. I don't know. I mean, if you were to put in, uh, I don't know if the statute requires they be a municipal employee or not. Um, I would guess that you could simply say the fire chief has the authority to enforce the fire alarm ordinance. Um, I'd want to check that for sure. Yeah. But, um, mm -hmm. Just thought we'd ask a question before we yeah, skip yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Question. No, that is a good question. You've given me two minutes. He'll, yeah. he'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> He's on it. I'm on it. <laughs> We certainly could figure that out. I just don't know right now. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions for Trevor? Thank you for your presentation. Oh, yeah. very good. Good to see you folks again. Yeah. <laughs> good to get out. And so I hope to see you the fourth. I will be there. <laughs> I will be there. Great. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, Trevor. All right. Thank you. And if we can help in the meantime or after, yep. you know where to find me. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Trevor, is that all available online? Mm, I don't think so. I don't need that. I'm going to take it home and recycle it. So, yeah. <laughs> if you want right, I'm happy to email it, but I don't think I don't think we have it posted online. Thank you. Probably should. Be. Uh, Planning Commission, with New Town Center. Go ahead, Paul. I'm going to let you talk. No, 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 no. <laughs> You're the chair. <laughs> I talk too much. <laughs> We're just here. To plea again, <laughs> to getting a, a person to sort of head honcho the new town center, and um, we really we sort of discussed it at the, the last meeting, and there's enough work for a full time person because it's not only the new town center but economic development, recreation, conservation, all that is related. And um, I think, you know, Tom, as you know, is just stretched way too thin at this point. So he's not even a full-time person on planning at this point. And I did look at, I don't know if you remember, but when I was here last, I sort of mentioned that I see the parallels between Berlin and the towns in sort of the outer rim of Chittenden County. And I did look at... Um, I went online and looked to see what kind of planning staff they have, and many of them have two people who um, work. And all the, all the um, towns that have downtowns have dedicated persons to the downtowns. And I think the new town centers, uh, both Colchester, you know, at, was it Col yeah, Colchester, Colchester and South Burlington have full-time people. And, and just to add to what Paul said, we were talking at the last meeting about um, staff, she's referring to staffing the Conservation <coughs> Commission and the um, Recreation Committee. Right. Um, and I, cause, and you know, because right now we have Tom, and honestly, when I first joined the Planning Commission, we didn't have staff, and I feel like we really sort of floundered. We didn't get a lot done. Mm -hmm. um, and it, so it, it's a tremendous help to have that person that's always sort of reminding right. you and sort of keeping things moving. And I'm not sure what the, you know, 
what the Recreation Committee, I think that's just forming. Just forming, yeah. Um, yeah. And the Conservation Commission, I'm, I'm not sure how much they, you know, what, I don't know what they're doing, but I do think that it helps to create opportunities to do more if you have a staff person helping, you know, getting grants for, you know, for, for the Conservation Commission to work on stormwater type issues. Um, we're going to meet with them next week, right. and we're going to talk about how we can maybe develop a plan to incorporate, um, you know, recreation conservation issues in, in the town plan, or in the town center. So I think there's opportunities for them to do more if they did have a support person. And so we talked about, um, you know, this person yeah. could, and actually Tom agreed, yeah. I think, to... <laughs> I think what, one thing that I would like to see and I will certainly help with it, but a job description. Oh, what, yeah, what, so we're working on that. You know, that. What, yeah. is, what is the job? Right, exactly. You know, what's I expected? I almost forgot. Um, I did ask Tom, because um, yeah. the South, Ilona in South Burlington did say she would give right. us her job description, mm -hmm. and I asked Tom if he had gotten it yet, and he hadn't, so he was supposed to reach out He's, to her again. Okay. Exactly, that's what we wanted to see, too, yeah. right. what yeah. her job yeah, description that's, said. So and the other, the other question I had, um, and I think it's a good idea, but it's hard to go from zero to a hundred yeah. in, in the in one year. Um, we had talked at one point about hiring a consultant to help us with. We don't have the designation yet. Right. Now I look, I'm optimistic and think we're going to have it, but mm -hmm. we don't have it yet. So um, we were. I was going to talk to the board about putting in the budget for this year money for a consultant to help us because Tom and I cannot. We don't have the expertise right. to do this application correctly. Um, well, but that's, I mean, we have the yeah, grant. Yeah, well, we've done the application. But you don't have the grant yet. But we yet, don't though. have the grant. But right. if we get the grant, that should help. Right, exactly. I mean, I understand, right. I understand we you apply for a grant. We won't know until December. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's, we're sort of looking at grants to sort of help along, but that's, they're just good for doing specific I mean, I guess things. I'm just, I'm, I'm looking at the logistics. Yeah. Where are we going to put this person in this building? Where are they going to work? Where, you know, I'm not saying it's insurmountable, but I'm just saying yeah. it's things that, of course because I've been away for a month and having great time, I haven't been keeping up. <laughs> if we had a new town center and we had new offices for the, the town, yeah. there'd be plenty of room. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do hear what you're saying, yeah. and, I, and I, it's somewhat of a chicken and an egg thing, I think. Yeah. yeah. You, you do have to have that person to keep the momentum going on the town center. And, and frankly, a lot of the things that we want to do, we can do without the designation. The designation makes it easier and provides more incentives. Um, so, in some ways, they're, they're obviously linked, um, but timing is a question, obviously. Part of what we're talking about, I think, is Berlin is growing up. It's yeah. and, growing, and yes. And where it's growing, there are more services required yeah. that heretofore have been handled by volunteers. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's no. why I kind of compared Berlin with the, the Chittenden County towns, because that's They've been going through those growing things, mm -hmm. too. It's exciting because it's inevitable yeah. it's coming. Yeah. But the question is now versus later in terms of bringing on someone full-time now before the designation, or is there a way to start out small and then big, bigger as we go? You know, also giving incentive for that person that came on as well yeah. to really right. be impactful and, and build. I'm just wondering if rather than a full-time, if it might be beneficial to start small and then build yeah. into it. I'm not sure how hard it would be to get a part-time person. That was that one of our concerns, yeah. is, is, is that is somebody going to take a part-time? I mean, obviously, you, can't, you don't know yeah. until you we try. We don't know way to gauge it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But that was the concern, yeah. is if we yeah. were able to get a quality person Right. If it was a part, if it was a say half time job. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to be involved with you when you that do the be, job description right. mm -hmm. and yeah. we talk about yeah. those types. I think of that's things. the next step. We that would be excellent. We'll share the job yeah. description yeah. and. And I went to South Burlington with you, oh, and yes. it's pretty impressive. Yes. Um, okay. And they've been working on it a long time. Right. Yeah. And so I understand we're not at that. Yeah. We're not at that level, um, and obviously they're bigger than we are. So there's a lot of differences. Yes. Yeah. Um, and was the lady from South Burlington willing to come and talk with us about what she has done and her experiences? I thought she was very officials? cooperative. I don't she think we asked her that, but I bet be. she yeah. would be. She's great to talk to. Yeah. yeah. 
I think that might be beneficial for the board. Okay. I'd really be glad to talk to her and ask. Yeah, if she's yeah. willing. Yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. That's a, that's a good idea. So do you think we're missing out on substantial grant money or anything like that in the meet like that we well, could have already had or? Well, the one thing <coughs> we kept talking about could when be, it came I to suppose. like the no, the, yeah, the park and the you know it, there was, yeah. it seems like there's a lot of money um, for those they got a lot of money for those types of projects. Right. Yeah. There's sometimes the bricks and mortar mortar projects can get. But we're sort of at the planning stage, and there are, there are grants, but they're little grants at this, this point. This person also was instrumental in coming up with some partners as well. That would, that's You know, good. that's yeah. um, a yeah. good thing to... Well, it's definitely, um, you need private right. industry. Private public in, in, type you of know, in with it, not just be public money. You mm -hmm. need private money mm -hmm. in there, too. Yeah. And you need to get give them the incentive. And, I mean, we will have, because the mall is definitely interested, and, and the ho hospital is interested. So, I mean, there already is talk of private money. And the, and the housing projects, too. I mean, we're in. very, I'm very excited about this project, but yeah. I'm just, you yeah. know, there's a lot of detail that I think we need to think about. Yeah. I'm not saying you haven't, I'm no, just no, saying, No, 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 well, we, you know, and we don't yeah. have the expertise. Yeah. I mean, we're right. just sort of, and I think it's part of it, you know, Whoever said, you know, we're a small town, come, you know, growing, and we do, you know, we still have a small town, you know, way of doing things, and it, this is a whole new game. Mm -hmm. So you're right, I mean, we need to to really think this through, but I, I think South Burlington is a good model. Mm -hmm. And as far as the town center, the, the planning commission is hoping to start meeting regularly with, land, with the landowners and sort of particularly if we, I mean, assuming right. we get the grant, because right. part of it will be, they'll be instrumental in sort of figuring out what that's going to look like. We want to make sure we keep them involved, right. engaged, um, so that we can Definitely. keep the momentum. So we, we're hoping to meet yeah. as often as we need to. Maybe it won't be regularly at first, but, you know, hopefully at least quarterly. Like nice that. idea. Yeah. And you said you'll know by December if you get the grant? Yeah, early December, That's great. I think. So it's only a month away. away. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Well, keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> because, yeah, I mean, that will help a lot, getting the designation. Because mm -hmm. that's sort of getting the recognition. So it sounds like you're saying, in addition to helping drive the downtown project, to kind of give staff time for these other committees that really don't have much assistance from us, i.e. the Conservation right. Commission, the, that, I mean, this new was, recreation, yeah. I mean, we've not done much And they have that. a lot, they'll yeah. have a lot to do with the new town center, actually, because, you know, the uh, yeah. trail, you know, pathways right. and all this. I thought was it sort of worked together. If you think about yeah. recreation bringing, you know, the activities can bring people to town, so it creates... Right. Mm -hmm. it, you know, creates can create economic development in some ways. So I think it, the idea was that those things were in some ways linked, um, and so that that would be a sort of a, a, a nice mesh for that mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. But I also understand the idea of possibly having somebody start half time right. and then, you know, building up over time. Right. Well, I, I you know the other the other thing that I'm concerned about is if you offer someone a job and have them start and then you don't have work for them. Well, I think there'll be plenty out, of work, you know, but I, and, but it's, yeah. And, you know, funding positions, I mean, well, it's an expensive yeah. process. Yeah. Yeah. No, I understand um, that, yeah. It's not about the money, but yeah. it's still an expensive yeah. process that has to be sold. Mm-hmm. Okay. my thoughts. Did, yeah. Was there an amount that you were thinking about for the budget, so when we talk about budget time? Boy, I don't know. I don't know enough about salaries at this point. Um, yeah, I think we'd have to yeah. think about that. I, I think Tom did have a number in mind. He had a number of 60,000, but I'm not sure where that came from. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think that we'll talk about that, Diane, when, <laughs> before, we, before we present it to the board. But um, <coughs> We know we can't afford Ilona. I don't know you what know. she makes, but I can guarantee we Well, can no. Um, <laughs> you know, and as I say, we... We were very aware that we need to have some sort of professional help, and I yeah. think we had talked about the consultant that you use for the zoning project. Um, I don't know who else is out there. Um, 
to help with the application. Yeah. Yes. 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 Well, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. To help right. with yeah, the right. designation part. But. And then how our budget works, we're going to be budgeting for FY21, mm -hmm. which is July of 2020 to June of 21. So yeah. you're saying that probably before then you'd want to have someone. Well, I think we were definitely place. thinking we, we, want, we were hoping it go into this budget cycle. Right. Or so we thought about at least in this budget cycle and while you're creating this new budget. Right. Okay. And we're you know thinking that this designation application, if we can get a consultant, then that will sort of tide us over mm -hmm. until the 20, 2021 budget. Right. Well, that's what I'm thinking too. That you might have yeah. be able to right. ease into it gently, and that way get people used to what's going to happen, yeah. and so that you can get buy-in. Yeah, there's a lot of moving parts. The town is very generous. <laughs> with I think the town's very generous, but you yeah. gotta have an explanation of what right. you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you both. More to follow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, we'll be back at some point just to keep you updated Wonderful. on what's going on. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Recreation Committee appointment. Is that from Sarah? Um, yes, thank you. Um, Jeff Farrell has asked to be appointed to the Recreation Committee. You did appoint two people at your last meeting, Mike Noyes and Hannah Connor, mm -hmm. which um, I would like you to sign their appointment slips while I'm thinking of it. And maybe you could sign this one because I fixed Jamie Stewart's name. <laughs> and Jeff has also wanted to be appointed to this committee. And you know him. He was on planning commission. Do have a motion? I move to appoint Jeff Farrell to the Recreation Committee. A second motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. I can give you that. Um, yes, Diane, thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thank you, Diane. Yeah. Is, um, it's the Cross Vermont Trail, trail support. support, and I think uh, Greg is here. Western? Yeah. Western? Yeah. yeah. Greg is speaking to you about, is it a grant that you're applying yeah. for? And you need to have a public, it needs to be discussed in a public hearing yeah. meeting. So yeah. here you are. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, so this is for the same project that we talked to you about just a few weeks ago, I think. Um, just the trail along, connecting the Montpelier bike path up to U32, and then across East Montpelier, including about a few hundred feet of further. Um, the, uh, so we're obviously we're still fundraising. The contribution from the town is much appreciated. It's in, the, it's in our restricted account waiting for construction to begin. We've got our, uh, our final, of the last of the many permits that we needed is Act 250, and we've got the draft. Act 250 was issued last week, and barring unexpected, it should be final in November. The VTRANS uh, clearance letter uh, saying that their preliminary engineering process is done was issued also last week. So um, we can bid it out as soon as we have the money. <laughs> um, the, we're raising the local match, obviously, from towns and, and local donors. And then um, the local match is matching federal money. We have a giant federal grant from 2005, you know, which we've been saving all these years. And um, because the price of steel went up, is the single largest contributor in, in just time passing, but steel was the jump. And so when we got our final estimate from the engineer, uh, the, the cost of just the steel for this bridge over the Winooski River was up by six figures. So that amount of money, you know, we go back, get another federal grant. Uh, is the fastest way to get that amount of money. So we're applying for a transportation alternatives grant. And, and uh, one of the requirements, normally it's a town that applies. 
so the select board of the town that's applying needs to, you know, know, you know, publicly say yes, we're applying. So we're obviously not a town, so we, the project is in multiple towns. <laughs> so we're going to just the select board slash city council of all the towns just to check the boxes to say that we're informing the town that every, so that the public knows we are applying for this grant. It's for this project. If, which, if you have any questions, you can ask me. But otherwise, I'll assume that you remember the you know basically what we're doing. Um, and I'm also trying to um, create a paper trail for the reviewers of the grant who are folks who work at VTrans um, and who may not be familiar with this project. And, um, and, and, and so they may say, Cross from my trail, what's that? And so I just wanted to, if possible, I don't know, a letter of support or some sort of note in the minutes of this meeting, or if you're willing to have the town say, even though you're not the applicant and it's not a town project, the town is supportive and has contributed some to the match and that kind of thing, just so the grant reviewers know that it's not just coming out of left field, it's a process that's been looked at. So I'd, I'd like to move that we authorize the town administrator to write a letter expressing that the town of Berlin is uh, supportive of the uh, Cross the Mont Trails project. I second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Motion carries. Great. Yep. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> uh, consolidated communications working with the town right away. We have gotten a right of way application for consolidated communications. They want to put um, is it fiber they want to bury um, at the end of Comstock Road. And they have discussed this with the highway superintendent and with Tom. And they both, Tom and the highway superintendent, are um, satisfied with the method that they propose. There will be a trace of wire to, re to uh, find it if it has to be found in the future. There will be signs posted of where the optic cable is. Um, and which yeah. is a lot of it's the dig safe rules too, but how deep are they putting this? Plus forty inches? Um thirty six. Yeah. I think it was yeah, just saying here. Yeah. So basically thirty six inch depth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're just plowing it. Yeah, it's gonna be um actually not in the road, it's gonna be in the side of the road going yeah. up the ditch line. So I move that we approve the permit for digging within the town right of way uh, for consolidated communications as presented. I second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, motion carries. Uh, Vermont Association of Snow Travelers. I bet these guys are from Vermont. These are the guys. <laughs> Is this the item that Josh gave to us about the... Yep, ex I, yeah. there is a... Uh, in order for us to cross any property, public or private, we need to have written permission from, from whoever either the representatives or the owners themselves, which that's what that right. form is here. And it does appear that I did get the right message on that. Josh was going to be here himself to talk about that and you know, the form of getting that signed that he's out of town. He has a night. new granddaughter. Yeah. Well, and I believe he's going to Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty awesome place to go. It's kind of like Vermont on steroids. That's place. nice. Last yeah. year, as you remember, you did um, an amendment. You made a snowmobile ordinance allowing travel on a town road from Cross Shed Road here. Um, yeah down Crosstown Road under the I-89 overpass to Payne Turnpike South. Um, and it was done with the stipulation that it would be reviewed yearly. Um, I don't think you used it at all last year. I was year. just going to say, is it being used? It was. You approved no, it on January 3rd. Right. Oh. My memory of it is it was either 60 or 90 days waiting period is probably not the right phrase but right. before anything that, that's that, by then yeah. snow was gone and it, so it was going to be right. starting for this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do know that, that Josh and some of the local fellows I helped from some have been out getting signed posts up and to getting these forms signed by all the, the local folks and everything I believe that uh, we crossed some of Dave's property. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm small. thinking that the board would need to extend it for 
another year or however long you decide to do it. Um, Does it make sense to have a policy like that renew in the summer? We could, I mean, or I mean, we could have it. We can have it extend to December 2020 again, and that, and we just catch it. If we catch it early enough, and just keep renewing it. But, I mean, we, but well, we could, yeah, we could say it expires in July. Right. Well, I think the advantage actually of having someone come in from the club is that you can, you can, if there's any sort of issues, you can mm -hmm. get those mm -hmm. worked out mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, so Definitely. I think that's you know, that's true. they may not know. Gauge what's they going may know on, things that we are. don't, you know. So I'm, I'm going to move that we extend permission to um, use those town rights of way from December 2019 to December 2020. And I second the motion. On this, do you want to take and uh, put a different end date on it? Or? Oh, we were, we were reviewing it annually. I mean, as I understand, that was that's the. So you want to do it the calendar year, not. It only happened to be the calendar year because you approved it January 3rd last year. When does your season end? Runs from December fifteenth to April fifteenth. So that's why I was curious about. So you could ex you could extend it for a year and three months, six months or whatever. Yeah. So that, that way you're that gets you out of the, out of the way. Theoretically, if there was, if we had an issue with it as a town right now, we probably know. Yeah, but we would also not. I mean, well, I mean, you could you they'd have the ability you'd have the ability to use it for half the season and then that would also have an issue right so do you want to extend it just to may and then we come so back at the, at the end of the yeah. season and we re-up it in may I just think with the or, season, yeah, does that, that make sense to you or how does, how does in, in other places where you do this my how do you usually do it somewhere that so you have a chance to uh get ready for the next year mm -hmm. and then you they you have the troubles. I mean, certainly by then the select board of the police will know about it. There's there's a couple there, there's two separate things that we're looking at here. The ordinance itself that we went through the process, and you're absolutely right, just happened to end up in yeah. January, yeah. so that's when it started, so that's how it got going. And the other is in order for us to take advantage of what you have granted us permission to, we actually have to have to sign annually right. Right. a form that goes with right. it. What normally happens is that we have pretty good relations with any of the towns. Where if there's something going on, we it's already by the time I would be sitting here, there there wouldn't be any issues because somebody to call them it either got worked out or we didn't know about it coming back because this isn't this so, isn't working. So, so, so is December to December okay then? If is we, that do, your if we just if we just press the the reset button as it's on the on the that, I don't see any reason that that wouldn't work and chances are we would be here before this kind of like now so right. that we would everyone would know ahead of time how things are going and by all means if anything crops up big or small you know reach out to us you got Josh and some of the guys locally oh, I know how to get you yeah and, <laughs> and, and, I mean things yeah. can happen but we've got pretty good relations with law enforcement locally. Dave, our club president, is very active in the community. So if anything comes up, because we don't want to be causing any trouble for anybody, that doesn't really help anybody anywhere. Well, that's not what I was wondering. Just so you know, how, or whatever. I just didn't know. Well, no, it's not like you're trying to line up the time seems odd in the middle of the year, like, how does yeah, this all. get to be January? Yeah, it's just but if a, it does, you don't have an issue with it, we may as well leave it the way it is, yeah. I would think. As long as it's not, I just try to be more no, I what, whatever works for you there, but right. Normally, we try to do this in the fall so that before the season opens, everybody knows what's happening and what's going on, and we try to be preemptive with that sort of so thing. So, the motion was to extend it till December of December, 2020. December. Yep. Okay, and I can put in my tickler file to think about it in the fall. Um, when, do the, when do the other towns uh, when do you go to them to renew? Oh. Is it kind of spread out through the year? Kind of, it, bo it bounces around some. I mean, we're getting Barrytown covers a, a great yeah. chunk of what we do, but Dave usually gets usually in the first meeting of the year. One of his items is I'm going to, um, by the way, I'm going to get all the town and you know show up at the meeting, and yeah. so we can you know meet for next year. I'm not sure there's. I'm not aware of any towns that don't do it year to year. Yeah. It gives you. It's a lot easier for you guys, and it helps with the. You know, with the citizens as it was, that people don't feel like they're signing up for a lifetime commitment for, for anything that comes along. The form that he's given us, um, we need. I need to fill some things in regarding the ordinance onto this, and but he does need to have it signed. So I'm wondering if you would give me permission to sign it for you. Sure. 
If you would motion, that would be great. So uh, I will um, yeah. I'll amend my motion to include and authorize the town administrator to fill in the landowner permission form. I second that. Any other discussion on this? All those in favor? All right. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, what, what do you need for us to do from here? Would we wait when Josh comes back in town to have him contact you for that? or how? Um, however you want to do it, I'm going to do it tomorrow, so it will be ready tomorrow. Oh, okay. So I, I didn't realize you were going to be. Good. Yeah, okay. so whenever you want to All right. do it. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Heller's license from Vermont. I mean, um, MVP Healthcare. Yeah. They're going to be there in the mall. They're going to be at the mall um, talking about health insurance. Was um, this the same same woman that came or that did this before, right? Um, no, you're thinking of the woman that had parties in the. In no, the no, there was another approved. insurance applicant. We approved one already, and it was with MVP, and they were bringing uh, like their motorhome type deal. For yeah, homes. that's the one. Did I miss something? Was I here? Someone that looked uh, like me? Look Maybe like it might have been when Tom was here, but we... You've already approved it. This uh, is um, so. <coughs> MVP for the mall starting the 30th of November to was December not, 4th. Is it not a different... Um, it could the, be a different broker. This thing already happened, though. No, yeah, it's ongoing because no. we're in the middle of the... I'm wondering, election. and I'm just piecing together. I think we were waiting for a check from them, which is now coming. <coughs> so maybe that's why it didn't get okay. forwarded. So if you've already proved it, would well, you just approve it again just to confirm, and that way it has a motion? Sure. I'll move to approve the application for peddler's license for Sarah Tijan at uh, MVP. I second the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Yeah, uh, October 3rd. <coughs> it was on the agenda for October 3rd. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I missed that then. Okay. Yeah. Um, Sounded well, it, it's, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's definitely that. Didn't sound familiar to me. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's done you, now. Yeah. <laughs> it's you've done never seen. Yeah. Things you've never seen. yeah. <laughs> okay, and Mike Moeller. Mike, Mike Moeller. Mike is the gentleman that sells. He's, his <gasps> application is to sell Christmas trees at the mall. He's done this many years. He's got his plan. You haven't seen it because he just gave it to me the other day. Um, we've never had an issue with Mike. And Move to approve the application for a public license for Mike Moeller. I second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I'm just, if I can just jump right on this one. Mo sure. Move to authorize the select, the select board chair to sign the small business Saturday, um, was it declaration? I guess, you know, the resolution. Resolution, yeah. yeah. Second the motion. <gasps> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what else is coming in here? Sewer? Um, I just wanted to make you aware that, and I think Tom has mentioned this to you, um, we don't have the final version yet, but they, the Public Works Board is going to be reviewing this at their meeting coming Monday to see if they accept it. This is a rewrite of the sewer ordinance. The sewer ordinance that we have is a result of many years of adding to it and changing it so it's a hodgepodge of, of things not that then it's just a natural progression so Tom has worked to get some um, a more concise ordinance and as soon as I have copies I'll have you take a look at it and see what see what you think but you haven't seen that yet I just wanted to let you know that it was on the way I spoke with Tom you know, these ordinances, like anything else, it has a 60-day, and I forget what they call it, grace period, or yeah. where someone can get together a petition, a referendum, and contest it. So it does take a while. 
and but it would probably be in the spring when it would take effect if we if we get it done in the next few weeks. So I just wanted to make you aware that they're going to be approving it on Monday. Well, they're going to be talking about it on Monday, and I assume they're going to approve it. Maybe not, but once they do, I'll send it over here. The next thing you had on the additions um, was the budget? Yes. Um, well, we have to do a budget. It's budget time again. So I've done a tentative schedule for the budget. Um, and be, in, in the past we've started, I'm trying to keep the meetings to be to um, complement the select board meetings. And I've got them at 6. I'm not sure. Last year we started at 5.30. Um, I was thinking 6 was enough time. I've also, so I filled in the budgets to be discussed on those dates. As well as at the end, there are a few dates that may be a little extra in case you need them. Mm -hmm. um, one thing of note, which is the special appropriation of petitions, January 16th is the deadline for petitions to go to the clerk, and so she'd have them mm -hmm. that day. Um, we'd like to have the budget final and the morning final by January 23rd. We do have a little more wiggle room, but... Um, Does it need to be posted? Um, it has to be posted by February 2nd, but it gives us a little wiggle room in case we have some... Can you last, speak a little bit for me? Last minute, okay. Um, is the time work for everyone coming at the 6th? Mm -hmm. um, I'll be out of town on the 5th. I could come earlier thing. if it's determined by everybody that we want to start early. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm asking the board. Did you want to start? Did you think we needed more time than an hour? Well, let's, let's take in, um, since we've got a fair amount of, of uh, meetings, why don't we just take and try the first two and see how it works? Okay. And what did you think that you wanted me to do on this planning um, person? I'm thinking of like doing something part time until we have more information. I think or would, a consultant. I think it would be interesting to see what they have for a job description before we actually make. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have no idea what to. You know, so it's, I think it's really hard yeah. to make any kind of yeah. rational or. Educated well, decision or thought right now for me, anyway. The thing I can see with that job description is going to be in flux no matter what. Well, they always are, but I mean, I think it's, it gives you some sort of framework to start with. Yeah. The, the thing that gets me about this, the, the town center and everything, is it's going to be very dynamic. It's going to, you know, be changing monthly. Mm -hmm. You know, the concepts and whatnot. Right. I think okay. it's important to have a leader and to tie all the everything together, like they said. So. I mean, I don't know that how, how well, we would do it otherwise, unfortunately. I can know? see it'd be helpful if you have somebody who is common to the zoning, the zoning and the... Um, Great continuity. DR, yeah, DRB and recreation and conservation, and go to those meetings and so they have, an, you know, they have somebody who can take and go they chart the course, so to say. Mm -hmm. The other question I may throw out, and I don't expect you to give me an answer, but is the board looking for some sort of um, guidance on budget growth, what they'd like to keep it to? I mean, our problem well, with yes, our... David. Yes, yes <laughs> nothing like that. <yeah. laughs> I think we all like to do that, but um, many of our, much of our budget is fixed costs that we don't control very much yeah, you know, like the insurances and the, um, and I don't think but I'm trying not to discourage people who have projects ideas for projects well, you know, I would like I don't know if it's possible but I'd like to take uh, have you follow that uh, how the um, you know that one up in uh, South Burlington is doing just to kind of you know see how much uh, possible revenue they're going to generate from? I think that Flo's idea of having, um, I forget her name, Iona or Ilona. Or it sounds like it might be Iona. 
Ilona, Ilona, to have her come in because she was very knowledgeable and very good to speak with. And she had a lot of things to say, which I've forgotten probably three quarters of them, but they had a lot of um, connections with different things that I think would be helpful for us to hear. And one yeah. of the things I remember about Ilona when we first were discussing it was that she's been there for quite some time and she started out small and worked and developed into the bigger position that it is now. Yeah. And yeah. I think that builds incentive for an individual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but, but I, I think that's definitely true. And go, but going back to Brad's question, what's the cost benefit? Right. You know, does it make sense to hire somebody at whatever level if we're sort of never going to see the fruits of mm -hmm. that labor? Or if we are seeing fruits, are we paying twice as much as what, what we're getting in return? I feel you're not going to see the fruits for a number of years. But but even if we had just a scenario, I, I'm just thinking right. like like remember when we were talking about regionalization of public safety, mm -hmm. and they and they had all the different like forecasting models like here's how this could work, mm -hmm. and it never worked out, and we were able to make an informed decision yeah. based on like. <laughs> I'm not saying it would never work out. Right. I'm not saying that it wouldn't be worth. It. I'm just saying it's not going to happen. Well, and there's and, and there's intangibles yeah. that you get too in addition to you know increasing the grand list and you know the tax base and all that there's also you know we ha we if we incentivize smart growth rather than just everything just wild west right. like everything yeah. just flies up everywhere which i think the town center designation is hopefully going to do that the rewriting of the town plan is hopefully going to mm -hmm. do that and if we have some yeah. shepherding that there are those there's that value there but on the other hand if we're paying someone sixty thousand dollars a year plus thirty thousand dollars a year in health insurance or whatever that ends up being benefits um, you know if we're paying a hundred thousand dollars a year and in the long term we, we can only see breaking even after 25 years in the best case scenario maybe we want to think about scaling it back to something right. part-time longer term mm -hmm. or or not at all or re reconsidering how we might spend that money more effectively again going back to that economic plan if we revisit that and part of the revisited economic plan involves us hiring somebody who is the economic development champion or the planning champion or whatever whatever we're going to call it um, that I, I think there's a lot of parts of the puzzle that we could that we could put together and have a coherent um, effort I mean, we're right on the edge of we're going to have to decide if we're going to be in charge of how this is going to get built out over there or just let it go and yeah. we can't wait I mean, Really, that long? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe this year, right? But we can look back. At, we can look right. back at that economic plan, and we can we can decide then if that's um, if that's the model that we want to continue to follow, right? Or if there's something different that we want to do. I mean, the the, the new town plan um, sort of overrules some of the stuff that's in that economic plan. So I think we I think it needs to be revamped for other reasons too. Yeah, but as we're looking at the budget, starting at a part time gig. And maybe if it works out and we find that, that it's it's working, that person can go from the 20 hours mm -hmm. to a full-time thing as more stuff comes online and right. it makes more sense to give them that. You know, mm -hmm. Again, we wouldn't want to hire somebody if right. there's no work for them to right. do. Right. So 20 well, hours could become 30 or become 40 or whatever. So then the next thing would be is if we could find somebody who would want to work for uh, Norfield and us. Mm. That way, there they have the, they have the a full time basically a full time job split between two different mm -hmm. entities. And one of the municipalities has to take a lead in something like that, paid through them. Right. Yeah. It'd be great if it was Northfield, but because yeah. there were yeah there were some towns recently in southeastern Vermont that I think five of them went in they sh they're sharing an energy coordinator. Really. Yeah. That's really, so really it's cool. A, I mean, and I and that use that can work. Um, I have found, though, many times when you share resources, it's like having one bicycle for three kids. I mean, you know, it's... <laughs> well, we're the oldest kids, so we get to ride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah at least get to help. <laughs> <laughs> but the only thing I was thinking is, is that I don't think you're going to be able to find um, somebody who can uh, do the writing and everything unless you can, you can have a uh, way for them to have a full-time... Unless that made sense and like on a, 
scale where we could incentivize them some way mm -hmm. with you know project growth or but 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 if they knew they had twenty billable hours with us every week and they could go get twenty billable hours with Northfield and we just had them punching in. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like we don't have other employees that work for other municipalities. In this case, you know, Washington County Sheriff or Orange County Sheriff. Mm -hmm. um, that happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It could also be somebody who works in another job but is great at grant writing. Right. right. And wants to sideline. Mm -hmm. They may yeah. be passionate about that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but even, I think, with what you're saying, Brad, even if um, a municipality like Northfield or somebody like that, they're, they're probably struggling the same way we are. So if we were able to identify them and even, you know, have a contract with our, that employee, so they knew they could get 20 hours here, and they knew they could go get 20 hours over at Northfield, well then they, you know, maybe you could advertise it together. At the maybe same, you, at the same time, there are other, other towns around that may want to take the uh, right be able to hire into this. Exactly. I think it would help us a lot when we have a job description and know what it is we need. Most definitely. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll leave that question to a surprise. We'll come up with a figure. See all you came back yeah. to? Yeah. <laughs> um, also, I'd like to add to this um, a discussion on the pre-town meeting. We have the pre-town meeting every year before the town meeting, and it's an opportunity for us to talk about things that in the past hasn't been able to at the regular town meeting because of voting's happening at the same time. Um, with the school this year, they're having a meeting on the same night that our pre-town meeting would be and the clerks have to be there. So our clerk would not be able to be at our pre-town meeting and theoretically, maybe other residents wouldn't be able to be, up to be there. And I've thought for some time that the pre-town meeting, I like the idea that we have a chance to present the budget, and I'd like to see more people come to it. That would be um, nice. But is there another time maybe we could do that rather than just the night before? Um, Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon. You know, something like that. And, you know, to try and get more people to come. And, and no matter what it is, you're always going to have people that can't come a certain time. But I think it would be nice to have it on a weekend and maybe tie it in with a potluck. You know, like a community well, social. Well, and, if, and depending on the Saturday that it is, like at the Grange, for example, the Grange already has a potluck uh, one, uh, one Saturday a month. Mm -hmm. Well, I would think if you're doing it on Saturday, you'd want to do it the Saturday right before the town meeting. Absolutely. So March, whatever it would be. That, so are you... Um, isn't that the tail end of school? That's not the tail end of school day. That's the tail end of vacation, isn't it? Probably. I mean, I don't know. Just thinking that could be I'm a, fine with anything other than the, you know, um, mid-February. If I have a training, I'll be gone a week. Well, I think you'd want it close to the meeting so that it would be fresh in people's yeah. mind. Right. Um, I th you know, basically, I think the last few years it's really been um, kind of, we've done it by rote, and I'd like to see it a little more exciting, mm -hmm. which is partly my job. But... Mm -hmm. Sure, what you wish for. I know. I might get it, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, anyway. Do you, do you know the date of town meeting? Uh, be the first Tuesday in March, whatever that is. I think it's the 5th. Uh, the 5th? I think so. Bear with me. So the first Tuesday? Yeah. First Tuesday is the 3rd. 3rd. The 3rd? And that okay. is the tail end. That's the last day of Okay, spring. so in other words, if we were to go with the Saturday, that would be the February 29th. So that, that, is, that is not a Grange potluck day. Okay. Not that we have to synchronize there or anything, but. Flo could whip up something in the kitchen for her. They all could whip up something. <laughs> but, 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 I bet you're a good what cook, time too. Is the, what time is the school meeting? Um, I, I don't know the answer to that. It's in the evening on Monday. Right, so, well, yeah. How long does the pre-town meeting usually last? A little bit? Couple. Couple hour. hours, an hour and a half, maybe. Depends on the conversation. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it possible to do it before? Once we have time, they're going to be doing there. Before possible? their meeting, you mean? Yeah, I'm right. on, on that time. night, on the Monday. I don't know what time theirs is going to start. I suppose it would be. Where are they held in their meeting? 
U32 is where they've been holding. I think it's going to be at U32, but so I don't really know. It's hard to Rosemary get from. The, from one Rome. of the problems is that, you know, I think Rosemary should be at the pre town meeting. And Absolutely. The, the, only other, the only other choice would be if you were to take and do it on like a Friday night or a Thursday night or. Mm -hmm. At least then people are still home. I mean, they're coming back from work. Yeah. So we're you're thinking Saturday wouldn't work because of school? I'm just thinking there's maybe a lot of families that will be on vacation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know a lot of them come back over that weekend. Mm -hmm. That's all. I, yeah. that's, that was my only thing. Yeah. That's a good I, mean, I know I was going, I don't think I'm going away this year at that time, but I was last year with all the kids and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. How long before we have to warn for the pre-town meeting? Well, it, we'd do it at the same time, the town meeting and... and what do we have until February 2nd? I'm yeah. hoping by the 23rd we'll be done, but... Yeah, so we have some time. We can think about this. I'm putting it, I'm putting it on the preceding Thursday or Friday. It's not gonna, not gonna change the school thing. Yeah. You know, anything you might wanna do is ask Rosemary what she thinks about it. She's well, she and I have talked about it, and she said for me to come and see what you thought about it. So oh. we're all thinking. Um, <laughs> I think we should ask her. You know? <laughs> but so I, I will talk with Rosemary a little further about it. Probably the same way that they all have pre-town meetings. Don't say explicit. She did check with the Secretary of State's yes. office, and interestingly enough, they said, "Well, you can have your pre-town meeting the same day as town meeting." And I'm I'm surprised because of the boat. I mean, how do you do that? I think you just have to have the polling. You just have to have it in a different place than the polling place. Oh, is that so? If you had the pre-town meeting over in the library, and you had the the polling over in the cafeteria, you could probably pull it off, and it wouldn't be interrupting. People want to vote. Well, see, the thing gets me about pre town meeting. Uh, I mean, you would think you'd want to have it advanced. To me, it would make more, it makes more sense to have it advanced enough so that people who are doing uh, absentee ballots would have a chance to mm. get in on the discussion a little bit. Whereas by the day before town meeting, the absentee voters have already voted. Right. Right. But it's hard to have, it's like having two town meetings. Uh, I always appreciate the people that come to these meetings, but right. they're the same people that come to the town meeting. Yeah, right. So they I can mean, do the whole thing. Anything else on that, David? That, that's all. I just wanted to look. Oh, the, um, we will, the town report, which I'm putting bids out um, for uh, to get quotes, we'll have to do that will be actually half the size of what we're used to because the school will be having its own report. So it will be just, the town report literally will be just the town report. That's turning it right into the town meeting actually. <laughs> it's only half the size. Do we know who it will be dedicated to this year? Not yet, so I need all the suggestions that mm -hmm. you might come up with. Nothing else then, Nina? Um, let's Bradley see. <laughs> no. <We're done>. Yeah. <laughs> let's see. Oh, um, I have a resignation I need to tell you oh, about. That's right. oh, the you DRB? Did say you had a yeah. resignation. Yeah. Um, bear with me a minute. I want to just cross some stuff sure. out. Um, little at sixes and sevens. Okay. There we go. Um, we got a note from uh, Josh Fitzhugh. Uh, he was a member of the Development Review Board, and he is expecting not to be available for these meetings for a number of meetings and has decided to resign. Um, he is willing to serve as an alternate, and so I'm asking the board if they would accept his resignation and appoint him as an alternate on the DRB. We have to accept Josh Fitzhugh's res resignation from the DRB and then appoint him as an alternate to the DRB. Second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. That's all I had my special add ons. Okay. So now we're down to approval of the board minutes. Yep. Approval of sub board minutes. Nine five 
19. Flo mentioned and, to me that she had something to change in there. Yeah, and also 10 3 19. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the change on the for the fifth was the adding, adding the name. Mm -hmm. Flo, is that that is correct. Where was it, Flo? It was, I'm just turning to it right now. It is right under Kuwa's Trail. Uh -huh. He started discussion on Kuwa's Trail. He said that the intent just putting in the name of the individual. There. Okay, that's probably a good idea. Yeah. I make the motion to accept the Thursday, September 5th, 2019 minutes with those changes as presented. Second. Any further discussion? Um, I think that he in question with Cross Trail is was actually Brad. Right. I think so too. Okay, well, that's that st started that's what there. I was just looking at. So I, 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 it makes sense if you read the previous sentence as a continuation. So board chair Brad Town mm -hmm. of the public hearing at 7 p.m. He started a discussion on Cross Trail. I see that. So just change he to town. Sure. That sounds fine. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking there was another gentleman that had started yeah, the discussion. But that was Steve we Morse further about. down. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. That gives me an out when I read this, of course, it made sense. Yeah. Wait. I make the motion we accept the Thursday, October 3rd, 2019 minutes as presented. Yeah. Oh, point of order, we didn't vote on the, on the oh, fifth no. yet. Yeah. That's right, we got interrupted, didn't we? Okay, though. Uh, so, any further discussion on the ones for the fifth? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. And now we move on to the October 3rd. I make the motion we approve the Thursday, October 3rd, 2019 minutes as presented. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing done, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Approval carries, I guess. And town administrator's report, David. I have a very short report. Um, thank you for allowing me to go on such a long vacation. I appreciate it. I had a wonderful time. Um, I think everyone did a great job when I was gone, um, keeping the home fires burning. Um, I've given you the um, class on December 3rd, which we did receive for the um, ordinance drafting or the ticketing procedure. Um, I've already discussed with you our plans for the budget. We're coming up, Diane and I are working on that, and we'll start that on the 21st, and you have the schedule. Um, that's all I really have to say. That was short. Yeah, yeah. I like a short one. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Um, round table, Justin? Um, no, just back to the tax stabilization thing. If, uh, if sometimes, I mean, I'm all in favor of looking at all those policies and procedures. The way I view it is they're just trusted advisors, so I know you say there's discretion and they can come to the town um, for us to, so there was some leeway. I, you know, I was looking at them as the advisors that we've appointed to do that, to follow through with what we had. So I, I, I would be happy to have further discussion on it. And if you don't think that, you probably should. Yeah. I just wanted to throw that out Yeah, so, so the discussion at the Economic Development Council was strictly, it was not, I mean, so it was far-ranging, but the, the actual motion was strictly to, to say that they've checked all the check boxes. So Tour's advocacy for that was different than the motion that passed mm -hmm. the, the rest of, of the council. Not, not that I care. I mean, that, that motion probably would have passed with me mm -hmm. uh, opposing it, but I, I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Well, perhaps sometime along we should just have an overall view, review of uh, some of these. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Because the, if the, the procedure or whatever, you know, absolutely. Uh -huh. Well, I'm a, I mean, it's got to where Barry and Mount Pillier, uh, for the most part, they they are they are built out. I mean, Montpelier has savings pasture left, but that's about it. And, and being built out as they are, and Barry's the same way. We're kind of the only game in town. We're very attractive. And and maybe you know if we do get the designation, then it's ultra attractive at that point in time. Yeah. So I understand that. 
Um, but I just think while we, while we have that as our policy, and that's why I was feeling strongly about it. But, uh, but is there, so I'm looking, I'm thinking of like Barry and Montpelier, they also have vacant storefronts, more, more in Barry, but we have vacant storefronts too. Yeah. So are there ways that we can incentivize economic development that doesn't require additional development? Absolutely. So do we want to think about a way that we can get the okay. Staples building, for just picking one example, get that revitalized, doing literally anything, because otherwise it's just a it's just blight. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you have to take and delve in to see why it hasn't been uh, mm -hmm. developed. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of rumors flying around, and the other question is, is just what you know. The cost per square foot of the rental. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, it may just be. That's half the reason why Barry's got some vacancies is the people who own it would rather, their business model is different than a lot of other people's business model and they have the cash to support it. So they'd rather sit on it vacant and wait for a yeah. tenant that's going to pay all the money versus get it occupied. But are there but are there incentives, smart incentives that we could look at that would incentivize? Well, if we don't, that's where very struggling right now is with these buildings because they've gone so far. But I, I completely agree mm -hmm. with what you're saying. See, one of the troubles is is you're looking you're looking at uh, you're looking at uh, uh, private enterprise from a public uh, perspective. It's a public private partnership, though. You can yeah. you can do it we, right. The, right. As the pu as as the public, we want to take and have our storefronts filled so it looks robust and mm -hmm. successful. But on the private side, because they're business people, they look at they may look at a vacant storefront as a, a tax incentive. Mm. You know, they could just drop off some extra income mm -hmm. and get down in their completely different agree. bracket. Right. Absolutely, depreciation, everything. Yeah. So I. I Mm -hmm. well, so we, well, we so need, you got you got to find a way to. Sorry. What you need to do is find a way so that that them renting that space actually benefits them. And so so there was a there was a policy. I'm trying to think. There was it was in Michigan or somewhere in the Midwest where there was a. It was some large company that had that owned so much of the land, in the in the town. Like and you hear these stories over and over, and they just laughed. Right. They didn't go out of business, they just left or consolidated operations somewhere else. And the town's left with all of these, this, these vacant places, and it's a lot like what you're saying. And they changed, and I'm not saying that we would do this or should do this, it just popped into my mind. They changed the way that the taxing worked to, they taxed the, the land and the property differently so that there was an incentive yeah. to, um, to keep it going. And it took seven years after that policy, and they're like, "Oh wow, crap! We we actually have to do something with this, or there's no there's no benefit to um, to us just sitting on it and writing it off." Yeah. And so they started selling off parts of that, and then people, you know, other smaller businesses came in and used the space. So they were a policy probably taxing vacant spaces at a higher rate somehow. But Something. Yeah, I, I I can go find the uh, the news article that I that I read. That was uh, that that was an analysis that was done not not terribly long ago. Yeah, I don't know if that would make sense either, but it, it, I'd be interested to see what. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, seems like we're all mm -hmm. in favor Anything of that as a further discussion. No. <laughs> <laughs> I had brought to Dana's attention. I just thought I'd let you all know. I had a resident that lives on East Road contact me because of a concern coming down East Road and making a left on Scott Hill Road. Um, the concern is, is that there's a hedgerow of the house that's on the left, and that years ago, the branches and everything, and it was thinned out, and now there's a camper that's parked there too, and that when you come to the end of the road and you're making a left onto Scott Hill, this individual feels that it's virtually impossible to see the oncoming traffic from the left and that it's an accident waiting to happen. So I reached out to our police chief, talked with him and also Dana, and I've been up there and driven it, and Dana was going to look at it, see what possibly could be done. Um, this person said they didn't know what to do other than to bring it forward, you know, to someone who's on the board to see what could happen. It sounds like it may be something that has been brought up before things have been yeah. done, and now it's resurfacing. I spoke to the chief about this. 
and um, he and Tim and myself are going to go up and look at it together. Mm -hmm. And if it's simply a matter of if it's out of the right, if it's out of the right of way, obviously we don't have any right power. However, Correct. we certainly could write the resident a letter. I think maybe they don't realize. You know, maybe they could move mm -hmm. where they're where their um, camper is parked. That's what I said to the something individual. Very simple like, like that, that to the individual it, as well. Is it the camper or is it the hedgerow that's causing the trouble? So well, initially I, it was the hedgerow and then the camper has been yeah. put there as well. And I almost hedgerow, think that hedgerow, years hedgerow, ago, I think I saw the camper on the other side. Maybe. This is the same intersection. We saw this in 2013. Yeah. And they did. And so back, it was back in 2013, they, th they thinned it out and it was... You actually had sight lines then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Until so. the camper was there, I think you could see through it because the, the, the hedgerow had started to hire. Mm -hmm. So and the police I mean, chief said there's been no um, accidents. That's what he told mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. me. But I just wanted you all to be aware. Okay. And uh, no, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, anything in the? Uh, I need you to approve oh. the warning, the yeah. warrants, please. We need to approve general fund accounts payable warrant number uh, 20G08 with checks 19684 through 19741 in the amount of $168,804.63. Also payroll warrant number 20-09 for payroll from October 13th, 2019 through October 26th, 2019 the amount of $42,161.05. Also October general journal entries and tax admin. Also, October reconciled bank statements for the General Fund, Sewer Commission, and Water Division. You have a second? Yes, I second that. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Any executive session meeting? Yes, please. Um, under personnel, and I'm sorry I didn't bring Okay, move to uh, enter executive session to discuss a personnel issue. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 